Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single one of these math problems from this book. If you are interested in watching the original solutions to any one of those problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 175. Please start doing page number 175. The very first problem that we see there, number 161. In number 161, we are told that uh, we are looking at a swimming pool from a point of observation V. This is point V. And we are told that from point V, from point V, an object that appears at point R, an object that appears at point R, because of the refraction is actually located at point S is actually at point S the question simply is what is this distance R to S that's all they're looking for this distance and they tell us that from O from O to S we are told is 10 so let's call this distance X let's call this Y so we know now X plus Y equals 10 they also tell us that O to V is 10 and so is, oh sorry, O to V we are told is 5 and so is the distance from V to R, same as this one, 10. It's a very straightforward, very simple geometry problem, there is nothing to it. First we are going to figure out the value of the Y, this guy, or rather value of the X here. And once we have the value of the x, we can subtract that x from the 10 and we can figure out the y. Finding the value of x is very straightforward. This is a right angle triangle. A, a simple application of Pythagorean theorem would do the job here. So if you look at the triangle, triangle O, V, R, in the triangle O, V, R, 5 squared plus x squared should equal the hypotenuse squared. And therefore, x squared would be 100 minus 25, which is 75, which is 75. And therefore, x is going to be the square root of 75, which can be written as 3 times 25. 75 can be written as 3 times 25, and the square root of 25 is 5. So it comes outside and we end up with 5 root 3. That's it, we are done. And therefore, our y that we are interested in, y is equal to 10 minus x. We just found the x here. It is simply 10 minus 5 root 3. And that's your distance y, which is the distance they are looking for, for distance from r to s. That's all. We're done. Let's go on to the next problem, number 162. Number 162. In 162 we are told that we are going to make a journey where we are told that we are going to travel x percent of the distance. Let's read very carefully, pay attention, okay? Not x percent of the time, but x percent of the distance. We are going to travel x percent of the distance at 40 miles per hour. They go on to tell us that the rest we are going to travel at 60 miles per hour. The rest is going to be 100 minus x obviously. So 100 minus x percent of the distance we are going to travel at 60 miles per hour. The question simply is what's the average speed? What's the average speed? Let's find out shall we? We are done with this part. The key to understand in this question is, is the fact that 
when we're looking for the average speed, we cannot simply take the average of the two speeds. It doesn't work that way. We can see average speed here for this journey is not simply the average of the 40 and the 60. And we're going to show here with a simple example that particular concept. For example, let's make up a very simple example. Let's say we're going to travel 200 miles. 200 miles. Let's pretend that we travel half at 100 miles per hour. We travel half the distance uh, at 100 miles per hour and we travel the other half of the distance at 10 miles per hour. In this scenario, the average speed is not going to be the average of the two speeds. The average speed here is not going to be a 100 plus 10 divided by 2. Uh, obviously, we can clearly see that we're not going to go, we're not going to average 55 miles an hour, we're not going to average 55 miles an hour because to go half the distance, which is 100 miles, to go 100 miles at 10 miles an hour is going to take 10 hours. And this guy, the first half is going to take only one hour. Which means altogether we're going to spend 11 hours making the journey, of which 10 of those 11 hours are going to be spent at a lower speed, at a much lower speed. 10 of those 11 hours is going to be spent at the, 10, at the speed of 10 miles per hour. It's going to pull the average down. The average speed, if you're going at 100 miles per hour part of the journey, and you're going 10 miles per hour at part of the journey, the average speed it would have been would be 55 miles per hour if we were told if we were told say for example that you're going two that we're going two hours at 100 miles per hour and another two hours at 10 miles per hour in that case the average speed over the course of four hours would be 55 miles an hour because there you're spending equal amount of time at the two speeds here we're not spending equal amount of time as we pointed out, the vast majority of our time is going to be spent at much lower speed. The average is going to be lower than 55, much lower than 55. Let's find out what it is, shall we? Let's find out. I'm curious. So, for the second half here, at 10 miles per hour, we're traveling half the distance, which is 100 miles. To go 100 miles at 10 miles per hour is 10 hours. For the first half, to go 100 miles at 100, to go 100 miles at 100 miles per hour is going to be one hour. It's going to take us a total of 11 hours for 200 miles. That's our speed. Our average speed is 200 divided by 11. 200 divided by 11. Let's find out what that is, shall we? How many 11s in a 20? 20 has one 11. 20 has one 11. The remaining 9 goes and joins a 0, becomes 90. How many 11s in a 90? 90 has 8 11s. 8 11s are 88. 8 elevens are 88. We have a remainder of 2. That 2 is to be divided by 11. Our average speed over the entire journey is going to be 18 and 2 11th mile, not even 20 miles per hour. As you can see, the average speed is not 55 miles an hour. It's much lower than that. It's much lower because we are spending vast majority of our time, 10 hours out of a total hours of, out of a total journey of 11 hours, 10 of those hours are going to be spent at much lower speed. Same thing is going on here. We can't just take the average of the two speeds. So there are two ways we can go about solving this problem. One way, this is an algebra problem, as, and as you know by now, we have come across many a times algebra problems, and you know every time what we do with the algebra problem in the exam. There are two ways of tackling the algebra problem. One way is to actually solve this thing algebraically in a classical method, traditional method, orthodox method, conventional method, uh, academic method if you like. Another way is to simply make up a number for a variable. Make up a number for the variable, plug in the values for the variable, and thereby convert this algebra problem into a simple arithmetic problem. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to make up a number for x. We're going to make up a number for x. Now, what better number, what better number to plug in for x here than what we did here? Here we pretended we did half our journey at 100 miles per hour, half our journey at 10 miles per hour. That's exactly what we're going to do here. Let's plug in 50 for x. Let's pretend that x equals 50. So we're going to spend half our journey at 40 miles per hour. We're going to spend other half of our journey at 60 miles per hour. We're going to figure out the average speed. Once we figure out the average speed, we go to the answer choices. Wherever we see x in the answer choices, we replace it with 50 until we find our answer. That's all. But here, first thing we have to do is make up, amount of, make up the distance. How far do you want to, how long do you, how long of a journey do you want to make? We just make up a distance. And the reason why we simply can make up a number of miles for, for a journey 
is because if you look at the answer, answer choices closely, you will see that the variable for distance does not appear in the answer choice. Answer choices. The only variable that appears in the answer choices is the percentage of the distance that you're traveling at a given speed. Percentage of the distance. Not the actual amount, the total amount of distance does not appear in the answer choices. That's your cue, that's your hint that the, that the, that the nature of the problem is such that it does not depend on the actual value of the distance. Let's make up a number. How far do you want to travel? Make up a number, a nice small number, that, we can, that, that is divisible by both 40 and 60. Let's pretend we're going to go 120 miles. So if we're going to go 120 miles, let's pretend that our distance is 120 miles. Uh, so we're going to go 40 miles per hour, so half the distance. We're going to go 50%, so 60 miles, 60 miles at 40 miles per hour. 60 miles at 40 miles. Why 60 miles? Because it's half of 120. And 60 miles at 40 miles per hour will take us hour and a half. Hour and a half. I don't like that. Do you like it? I don't like dealing with fractions. Let's change this to something bigger so that we don't have to deal with fractions. Instead of 120, let's pretend it's 240. So if the distance is 240 miles, half the distance is going to be 120 miles. And we're going to travel the other half of the distance, another 120 miles, at 60 miles per hour. Okay, watch what happens. 120 miles, 120 miles at 40 miles per hour will take 3 hours. 120 miles at 60 miles per hour will take another 2 hours. It will take total of 5 hours. Total of 5 hours to go how much of a distance? To go a total of 240 miles. That's it, we're done. Miles per hour, you see. So it's 240 divided by 5. It is 240 divide by 5, let's multiply top and bottom by 2, let's multiply top and bottom by 2 so that we have a 10 at the bottom, we can easy to deal with, 240 times 2 is 480, 480 divided by 10, now we can knock out the 0, and we find that the average speed in this scenario, assuming that we travel half of our journey at 40 miles per hour and the other half of the journey at 60 miles per hour, if that's the case, it doesn't matter how, how long of a distance you travel, it does not matter whether you travel 10 miles, or 20 miles, or 17 miles, or 17,000 miles. As long as you do 50% of your journey at 40 miles per hour, and 50% of your journey at 60 miles per hour, you will always find that your average speed over the entire journey is going to be come out to be exactly 48 miles per hour. Now why is it 48 miles per hour and not 50? Why not the average of the two? Why is it lower than 50? Because you're spending majority of your time going at a lower speed. Since we are spending the majority of our time going at a lower speed, it pulls the average down. You see, that's what it is. Now that's it, we are done. We go through the answer choices and we replace whatever we see x, we replace it with 50 until we find 48. 48 is our answer. Let's go through them. Let's go through them. Answer choice A says, answer choice A says 180 minus x over 2. Remember, our x is 50. Remember, we plug in 50 for x. 180 minus 50 is going to be 130. 130 divided by 2 is 65. That's not going to do the job. Excuse me, just for one second. Let's do the next one. Part B. B says x plus 60 over 2 x plus 60 over 2, x is 50, 50 plus 60 is 110, 110 divided by 2 is 55, that won't do. We're looking for 48. Let's look at C. C says, 300 minus 50, 300 minus x over 5, which is 250 over 5, multiply top and bottom by 2 again, if you do that, you'll end up with 500 over 10, and that's that's the, that's the 50. That's, that's, this is this is the most popular wrong answer. Most popular wrong answer. And in the industry, we have a if we have a term for it. The most popular wrong answer is what we call the sucker's answer. Be careful about it. Okay. Be on the lookout for it. B says 600 over. 115 minus x. 115 minus 50. We know 100 minus 50 is 50, and therefore another 15 would be 65. So it's 600 
over 65, 600 over 65 is something less than 10. It's something less than 10. That won't do the job. We're looking for 48. Let's look at answer choice E. Can we do it at the bottom here? Answer choice E. Answer choice E says 12,000 over X plus 200. X is 50, so we get 50 plus 200, we get 250 at the bottom. We get 250 at the bottom, and on the top we have 12,000, which we're going to write as 12 times 1,000. And you will see in a second why we wrote, wrote down 12,000 as 12 times 1,000, because it's easier to deal with it this way. How many 250 in 1,000? 1,000 has 4, 250. 250 plus 250 is 500, and 500 plus 500 is 1,000. So, 1,000 has 4, 250. 4 times 12, voila, 4 times 12 is 48, which is exactly what we've been saying all along. Right there. 4 times 12. 4 times 12. Answer is 48. That's our answer. That's the one that matches. It better match because all the others we ruled out. All the others we crossed out. That's our only hope. Now listen, if you if you're curious, if you are if you are of a curious mind, this is only for learning purposes. Do you understand what I'm about to say? It's not something that we're going to be silly enough to do in the real exam. In the real exam, do not try to solve a problem like this algebraically. You will regret. You will end up wasting a lot of time, and there is a great chance, there is a high, very high probability that in the process you will end up making some careless mistakes. Do you understand? Don't do these prob problems like these are not to not to be not meant to be solved algebraically classically but just for learning purposes right now we are not taking the exam just for learning purposes if you're curious and if you want to learn how to solve this problem algebraically in the in the purest sense of algebra in the purest sense of algebra not in the way the book shows you the solution at the, at the, at the back of the book I believe it's on page 240 I believe it's the uh, is where this let me quickly check I'm, I'm going by my memory here page 240 is it Yes, on page 240, they actually show you the so-called algebra solution, but that's not an algebra, algebraic solution in the purest sense of the word. If you're interested in watching, uh, learning how to solve this problem algebraically in the purest sense of the word, I'm going to give you a video that you can watch. Where can we put it? Let's put it up here. So the classical solution. classical solution to this problem you're going to watch watch day 179 just type in GMAT math 179 day 179 it's a 13 and a half minute long video and you might get something out of it if you're interested you understand I'll see you tomorrow okay bye now